Welcome back to 2024. So is it a good time to buy and is it too late to sell? People are asking. If you invested in a home for the last few years, are you staring at a prospect of being upside down for the next half decade? Or perhaps looming the fear of history repeating itself and we're brink of a noble global financial crisis like in back in 2008. And what's really happening with these interest rates? Lots of questions. So hey there, future home owners and savvy home sellers. Welcome back to my channel where I'm gonna decode the real estate market with a touch of magic. So take a look at our crystal ball here. Why? Because predicting the housing market is like rolling the dice in today's dynamic landscapes. So I'm serving up the housing market report. Brace yourselves, the numbers are like a roller coaster. So according to the big players, let's start off with prices. And remember, none of these people are home, are real estate agents. They don't sell real estate. These are, and these are national numbers. Realtor.com says it might dip 1.7%. Zillow think it's a mere 0.2. While Mortgage Bankers Association is all the way up the mountaintop and saying, or 4%. So where do we stand? Well, if you average it out, we're looking at 1.5. The highest is not even as high as the, the normal of 4.92. Now, we do need home price appreciation to slow down a little bit because of the affordability crisis we're in right now. So we basically need three things. One, we need prices to slow up a little bit, wages to increase, and most importantly, mortgage rates to moderate even further than they have already are, they have already, so um, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Remember, this is for the entire United States here, but building the burb, like last year, is gonna go up. I think we'll see around 5% appreciation, more maybe or less in some areas, especially in the burbs of Philly. Based on my two listings I just sold last week at a hot minute for a crazy price, so right now, there are not as many offers on each listing. However, there's still those people out there, those buyers, who have lost out on several homes, that they want to get a home. They want to stop paying rent. They'll do whatever it takes to get it. Plus, there's all these new buyers coming into the marketplace. I'm really excited about 2024. And remember, it doesn't mean prices coming down if you see a home that comes down $50,000, because maybe it was overpriced in the beginning. Say it was $550,000 even though a house across the street just sold for 500, which is a similar house. They were priced too high. Okay, so they dropped their price now to 500 and now they're selling it. It didn't mean that prices came down. It just wasn't priced properly in the first place. So now let's look at sales forecast, which is really what I like to look at as a total number of home sales in the United States. And Betty Mae projects just below 5 million 5.2 million is what would be the average over the last 10 years outside of the past unicorn years, which I call them, which is 2020, 21, 22. Now this is a 20% increase from the previous year and the sales forecast is looking pretty positive. And that's really something to be confident about, even though you hear in the news that things are gonna be doomsday. But before you start tallying up all the numbers, I got a hunch we might just blow these predictions out of the water. Why? In the last few days, I got eight listing calls because people are just starting to wanna sell. The winds of change are blowing our way. I got investors, past client investors calling, past client parents going into nursing homes or passing away, divorces, things like that. All those things are, are happening. Plus, I have a lot of my empty nesters. I've had over 300 empty nesters and was waiting to sell for the last three years. They're now saying, hey, it's now time. I'm feeling more comfortable. That's what I think is going to be happening. Why more sales, more inventory is going to be coming on the market. Now, mortgage rates are going to play a huge part in the number of sales. We've seen a roller coaster ride these past six months with rate. This graph shows you where they were starting, you know, what happened six months ago, and then now they're coming down. They were at 7.22, now they're down 709, now they're going down some more, and they're going to change daily. So, I don't want to claim to have a crystal ball for mortgage rates because no one can predict mortgage rates with certainty. But if this trend continues, we're in for an active market. Some economists are predicting that we'll be back down to 6% by the end of 2024, which is pretty cool if that happens. So why do I think 2024 might be the breakout year? Two words, buyer demand. Despite rates hitting 23 year highs, people are still on the hunt for dream homes because 72% of home buyers favor home ownership over long-term renting. Especially these buyers who are the Gen Z buyers born between 1997 and 2012, they're 27 to 40 years old. They look online, they see an attractive, appropriately priced home, and they want it. They're gonna get it, and these type of homes are moving like hotcakes. So if you're thinking of selling, it's good to get a room by room by me to get an idea of what needs to be done to your house to make it look that way, attractive and priced appropriately for buyers will just jump on your house and pay you more money. Now buyer demand is not just strong, it's exceeding pre-pandemic levels from 2016 to 2019. As you can see with my graph, 
showing traffic numbers are exceeding pre-pandemic numbers by 39%. Imagine if rates drop into the five. We'll see more inventory hitting the market as more home sellers. If they had a lower rate, they're going to feel more comfortable moving, right? So I believe 2024 will be a very, very active market for two reasons. More inventory is coming up the market and more buyers are going to be eligible to purchase a house. It's a win-win. So a market insight that I want to share with you is the word affordability, a word today to a fantastic 2024. Now, headlines may scream, yes, about wager, increases need to go up and dramatic price drops. Let's bring back to reality. Last year, the mainstream media showed that prices were going to go down in January. They're like, oh, it's going to go down. I said, no, they're not. And they didn't. In Philly and the Burn, that didn't go down. So they went up. You're not going to see prices dropping in the suburbs of Philly in 2024. You'll also always get the fact on my channel. It's a real real estate reality here. We're not aiming for affordability of two years ago when rates were 3%. That's crazy. You know, we're not there. We're not aiming for that. We're aiming for normal affordability. 45% of the income going to a mortgage payments about you know about the striking that you know, the balance right now here's a critical aspect often overlooked called equity buildup rent versus buy isn't just about monthly expenses it's, it's about the long-term benefits over the last 30 years we've seen significant appreciation see this graph here in our area 280 percent wow buying a house isn't just a financial decision for today it's an investment for your future you're not just investing in the roof over your head you're tapping into a history of growth and wealth building now, there are some skeptics out there that say demand isn't as robust as it seems. Despite some arguing that it's not as strong, the numbers speak for themselves. I see what's happening. I sell listings, I sell houses, I'm in the, I'm boots on the ground. That's not what's happening. See, the average number of offers on the home of recent sales is at 5.4%. A little lower than before, but you know, it's higher than 4.7 seen in October. It's a competitive market out there. You need to be strategic when buying a home. And demand is alive and well. So let's look at inventory next. I do want to show you that inventory is coming. Take a look at the slide. This is what I was saying back in August, September. I'm not saying that we're back to normal. We have a lot of work to do on the listing side. But what I do like, if we look at the black line, the solid black line here going across, that's new listings this year coming out month to month. Dash line, all right, that line is where we normally it would go down in the winter months, in the fall. But if you look at the other years, we go all the way back to 17 and around this time of the year, new listings usually dive as going into the holiday season, right? But this year it didn't happen. It didn't happen starting in August. It started ticking up. See, I think that we're seeing, which we saw on the buyer side almost from the beginning, that the sticker shot of going over 5% on the mortgage rate, then 6% and then 7%, that sticker shot, the buyers got over that pretty quickly. Sellers not so much, but mainly because they, they probably had a mortgage under 4% on their current home. The buyers got over that quickly and they stayed in the market and they bought houses. They paid over list price and there was many offers on the home. So there you have it. 2024 is shaping up to be a thrilling ride in the real estate market. We're seeing potential for increased sales, moderate price appreciation, and an active market. Before I go, want me, I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below on what you think about the current real estate landscape. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What burning questions do you have? And hey, tell me what topics that you want me to delve into. Now the market is shifting and the opportunities are ripe for the picky. I will be doing my next off video. It's about getting money and grants to buy a home. It's going to be really good, so stay tuned for that. And subscribe if you haven't already, please. And if you haven't, that would be great. Tell your friends. And let's navigate this sea of change together. Until next time, happy house hunting and house buying.